So today we're going to look at how to balance equations using the method of half reactions. Um, and sometimes you might see these reactions happening in acidic solutions, sometimes you might see basic solutions, so we'll look at each of those scenarios. Um, so um, method of half reactions is one way to balance a redox reaction. Um, there's a set step by step we're going to go through. Um, and I'm going to do it with an example, but in case you want to reference the steps that I'm doing at any time, um, the first step is you're going to write an I a skeleton ionic equation that shows only the substances being oxidized and reduced, and that's usually what's given in the problem. The second step is we're going to start splitting this whole reaction into two half reactions, one for oxidation, one for reduction. Then we're going to balance each of those half reactions in a set um, step by step. We're first going to balance all elements other than H and O, then we're going to balance the oxygen, then we're going to balance the hydrogen, and then we're going to balance charge. Then we're going to make sure that each half reaction um, has conservation of mass and conservation of charge, so we're going to multiply each by integers. Um, then we're going to add the re half reactions together, and then we're just going to double check that the whole reaction is um, balanced. So we're going to do a step by step to really see these in action. Um, okay, so here's an example. Notice that step one is already done for you. I've given you essentially a skeleton equation, and it's showing what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Notice the Cu is going from zero to plus two, so it's being oxidized. The nitrogen is going from plus five in NO3 minus to plus four, so that's being reduced. If I tried to balance this reaction right now, um, I would just start going in circles because if I tried to balance the oxygens, it would unbalance the nitrogens, um, and I would never get to balance this. So there must be other species involved that are not being shown right now. It's just that those other species are not being oxidized or reduced, and that's why it's not showed in the skeleton equation. Okay, so um, step one is done. Step two is to start splitting this up into two half reactions. So I'm going to put the copper turning into copper 2 plus um, and the NO3 minus turning into NO2. So you're kind of just grouping the like elements onto either side of the reaction. Um, really what's happening is I'm starting to show an oxidation half reaction on top. The copper is going from zero to plus two and the bottom is turning into my reduction half reaction because the nitrogen is being reduced. Um, if I look into the example back at the top, it's telling me that this is occurring in an acidic solution. So if I start thinking about um, what is present in an acidic solution that I might be able to use to balance this reaction and that might also um, be reacting in some kind of way. Okay, so acidic means that there must be H plus present. And solution, meaning an aqueous solution, means there must also be water present. So I'm going to start using these things in balancing my reaction. Additionally, if this is a redox reaction, if something's gaining electrons, something's losing electrons, um, in each half reaction I can actually also be putting electrons in there, which we show as E minus. So these three things, H plus, H2O, and electrons, are things that we're going to use to balance each of these half reactions. Okay, so let's handle one at a time. So um, if you saw step three that I had put up initially, the first thing you have to do is balance everything other than oxygen and hydrogen. So if I'm doing the copper half reaction first, there's one copper on the left, there's one copper on the right, copper is already balanced. I'm not looking at charge right now, just looking at mass, there's one copper, one copper, we're balanced. Okay, the next step is to balance oxygen. There's no oxygen present, so I'm going to skip that. The next step after that is to balance hydrogen. There's no hydrogen present, so I'm going to skip that. And the last step is to balance charge. Well, if I think about what's present in solution that has a charge that's not going to unbalance any mass, that would be electrons, because if you remember, electrons have negligible mass. So we're going to use electrons to balance the charge in each of these half reactions as our last step. So um, so if there's a 2 plus on the right and 0 on the left, I want to add an electron to the right hand side. And I don't just want to add one electron, I want to add two electrons so that the charge is the same on both sides. Now the charge on the left and the right is 0 and 0. 
And just to be clear, the charge doesn't have to be zero on each side, it just has to be the same on each side. So what you'll find is that you're going to be adding electrons to the more positive side to bring that side's charge down to the other side. Just make sure you don't change the charge of an actual electron. You don't want to write E2 minus. You want to put the 2 in front as a coefficient. So this is now a correctly balanced half reaction for the copper half. Let's look at the next half. So following the same series of steps, we want to balance everything other than oxygen and hydrogen first. So there's one N on the left, one N on the right. That's already balanced. Okay, the next step is to balance oxygen. Well, what did we mention that's present in an acidic solution that has oxygen in it? And that would be H2O, liquid water. When I have an aqueous solution, I have liquid water present. So I'm going to use water to balance the oxygens. There's three oxygens on the left, there's two on the right, so I'm going to add one water molecule on the right and we'll put it as H2O liquid. You don't want to write H2O aqueous because that's water mixed in water with mixed in water, which is still liquid water. Okay, so I always balance everything other than H and O, and then I balance oxygen. Okay, my next step is to balance hydrogen. And typically, if I've balanced oxygen already, even if there were no hydrogens present, I've now introduced hydrogens by adding in a water molecule. So if I look, there's two hydrogens on the right, so I need to balance those two hydrogens by adding hydrogens on the left. And what's present in an acidic solution that we can use to balance hydrogens? That's H+. So I'm going to be adding two H pluses on the left hand side. Notice the reason why we are going to balance oxygen and then hydrogen. Because if I balance oxygen and I do H2Os, that's going to, even if I had hydrogens in there to start with, it's going to unbalance hydrogens. So we always do oxygen and then we do hydrogen. We're balancing oxygen with water and hydrogen with H plus. The last step is to balance charge, and it makes sense that we would leave charge to the end is because if we introduce H+, we're going to be changing the charge as we go. So our last step is to balance the charge with electrons. If I look on the left-hand side, I have two H+, pluses, so that's a 2+, plus, and one NO3-, minus, so the total charge on the left-hand side right now is 1+, plus. and on the right-hand side, the total charge is 0. So we've got to add one electron to the left-hand side. So that one minus, two plus, and one minus all cancel out to be zero, which is the charge on the right. So I am looking at the coefficient when I am looking at the charge. If I have two H pluses, that's a two plus right there. Now I have two correctly balanced half reactions. If I want to get the full whole reaction, I need to add these two halves together. But before I can do that, I need to make sure that I am going to have conservation of mass and charge in my total equation. Meaning that however many electrons are lost, I also need that many electrons gained. If I notice in my top reaction, um, I have two electrons that are lost. And in my bottom reaction, I only have one electron gained. First of all, at this point, you should also make sure you have electrons being lost in one reaction and gained in the other. And if you don't, that means you did something incorrect. The oxidation one should always have electrons on the right because they're lost, and the reduction half reaction should have electrons in the left because they're gained. All right. So if we want to make sure that these electrons are equivalent, then we're going to have to multiply one of our reactions by an integer, so, or maybe even both of the reactions. So what we want to do is we want to multiply that bottom reaction by 2. We don't want to just multiply the electrons by that. We have to carry that out through the entire reaction. So here are my two half reactions. If I take that bottom one and multiply by 2, my coefficients go from 1, 2, 1, 1, 1 to 2, 4, 2, 2, 2. Now that the electrons are balanced, I can add these two reactions together. And now when I'm adding the reactions, the electrons should always cancel out. If they don't cancel out, that means you forgot to do that last step. Okay, and now I'm going to add up everything that's on the left-hand side, everything that's on the right-hand side, and get my full reaction. 
if both reactions had H pluses and H2O's in there, it had waters in there, then some of them might end up dropping out. And this is my half, my correctly balanced whole reaction now. Um, and you might want to just check that you have conservation of mass and charge. Um, on the left hand side, I have a plus two because I have four H pluses and two NO3 minuses. And on the right hand side, I have two plus and all the mass is conserved as well. All right, let's take a look at um, another example. Um, and let's take a look if it were in basic solution as well. So as soon as I see something in basic solution, um, I want to at first disregard the fact that it's basic, and I want to treat this as if it were in an acidic solution. So if I look at this, let's just follow those same steps that we did before. Okay, let's split it up into two half reactions. I'll keep the eyes together, the manganese is together. Um, right away, I can kind of see that the I is being oxidized. It's going from negative 1 to plus 5. The manganese is being reduced from plus 7 to plus 4. So the top is my oxidation half. The bottom is my reduction half. Though I don't need those oxidation numbers to correctly do the half reaction. Okay, so let's treat one at a time. We'll do the top one first. Balance everything other than oxygen and hydrogen. The I is already balanced. Okay, now we're going to balance the oxygens by adding water. There's three on the right, so I need to add three waters on the left. Now I balance the hydrogen. I've introduced three waters, so that's six hydrogens on the left. So I need six H pluses on the right. And now we are going to balance charge. There's a 1 minus total charge on the left. There's a 1 minus and a 6 plus on the right, so that's a 5 plus on the right. So I need 6 electrons on the right hand side. Or I can look at it and see the I minus and the IO3 minus would cancel each other out, so that would give me a net 6 plus on the right, and I would need the 6 minus on the right. Okay, let's do the same thing for the bottom. Balance everything other than H and O, so balance the MN, that's already balanced. Let's balance H2O, uh, oxygen with using H2O. There's four oxygens on the left. There's two on the right, so I need to add two waters on the right. Now I balance the hydrogen. I've added four hydrogens on the right, so I need four H pluses on the left. And now we'll balance charge with electrons. There's four H pluses and one MnO4 minus, so that's a plus three on the left and a zero on the right, so I need three electrons on the left. We can add these half reactions together, but we've got to make sure the electrons are equal first, so I can multiply that bottom reaction by two. Okay. I should notice that electrons are on opposite sides, which is good. I should notice that my oxidation half reaction has electrons on the right. My reduction half reaction has electrons on the left. When I multiply that bottom reaction by 2, that changes every single coefficient in that reaction. And now I can start adding these reactions together. The electrons will always cancel out. Notice that some other things are going to end up canceling too. I have three waters on the left and four on the right, so that's going to cancel out to just give me one net, um, sorry, three waters on the left and four waters on the right, so it's going to cancel out to give me just one water on the right. And I have eight H pluses on the left and six H pluses on the right, so that's going to cancel out to give me net two H pluses on the left. And when I add up everything on the left hand side and put it to the left of the arrow, and I add up everything on the right and put it to the right of the arrow, this would be my correctly balanced half reaction if this were to take place in an acidic solution. Now if this is a basic solution, which is what it actually says in the problem, what's wrong with this? Well, a basic solution should have OH- in it instead of H+. I still have water in it since it's an aqueous solution, so that's fine. And I still could have used electrons in my half reactions. So um, I should be having OH- instead of the H+. So how are we going to remedy this? Well, all we're going to do is we're going to check how many H pluses are in my reaction that I have right now. I've got two H pluses on the left. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add that many OH- to each side of the reaction. 
So just like in math, how if you're trying to manipulate an equation, whatever you do to the left-hand side, you have to do to the right-hand side. The same thing is going to happen here when we're looking at this chemical reaction. We don't want to change the balancing overall, so whatever we do to the left, we have to do to the right. Okay, so here's that same reaction. I just moved it up. So since there's two H pluses, I'm going to add two OH minuses to each side of the reaction. Well, on the left-hand side, if I have H plus and OH minus, what do they react to form? They react to form water. Okay? Um, so really, the side that has H plus, um, they're just going to react with that many OH minuses to make that same amount of waters. Um, so that's really all that's different about the reaction. Now I just have to take care of some housekeeping and cancel out any waters that might be on both sides and re my, rewrite my reaction. Because if I notice right now, if I wrote it as is, okay, I have I minus and two uh, permanganate ions and two waters on the left, well, I've got one water on the right, so one of those waters will cancel out and it will leave a net one water on the left-hand side. And notice now I have two OH minuses on the right-hand side. So this is how you change your answer from acidic into basic solution. So if you see basic solution, you're going to handle your problem the exact same way as if it were acidic. And then all you're going to do is you're going to add however many H pluses you had in solution, you're going to add that many OH minuses to each side. The side that the H plus is on will cancel out to make that many waters, and the OH minus will remain on the opposite side than the H plus was on, which kind of makes sense.